Hello America, I hope you're doing well. Welcome to my review of Love After Lockup, season three, episode 29, 30, and 31. Yes, okay. So I watched all the episodes and I am here to talk about the episodes. I have 444 notes, wow, how amazing. Andrea Lamar and Priscilla went to go meet Shantae. Um, I think that this was the first time that I've just seen Andrea not be too extra in any way, shape, and form of the word. Even when he bought her the car and gave her the car, she wasn't extra. She wasn't extra at all. So I was really happy with, you know, their interaction. Uh, Shantae wants to be a part of their family. Um, Andrea says that she was protecting her family, but, you know, she does want Shantae to be a part of her family as well. Um, you know, I do a pre I do like that Andrea and Shantae are talking, but also Lamar like just go over and see your daughter. Like I don't I don't I don't I don't really know. It's like Shantae was like I feel like you don't want Lamar to come over here, but it's like Lamar is an adult, like a grown, grown man. Grown. Lamar is grown. He has a daughter and he is a grandfather, okay? He, I'm not, like what? I don't want you to go see your daughter. Shut up. And just leave. But anyway, they're in a good place. He didn't bought her a G. It looks really nice. Anyway, that's the end of their story. Shane, Lacey, and Chon. I, Shane... At his core, sometimes be feeling, be giving me scared of John vibes. He be giving me straight scared of John vibes. And I be like, bro, are you scared of this man? Because you definitely be giving me, I'm, I'm going to turn you to lock code. That's not how he sounds. That's not how he sounds. But I can't get his voice. Anyway, Lacey is like, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. I mean, yeah, I had to get a protective order against him once because he came, you know, and he knows where I live. And he was like you know, like, drunk and, like, beating on the door, but it's not a big deal. Okay, ma'am. Okay, you don't think it's a big deal. Okay, that's fine. We see John, he goes to meet with Miranda, who is Lacey's best friend. Uh, La uh, Miranda says that she can't give him any information as to whether, uh, Lacey called the cops on him that night, but she did want to tell him that Lacey is pregnant with Shane's baby. This makes Sean very sad because, you know, he thought that, um, you know, one of her children was his, you remember. And also, she got pregnant before, but they had a miscarriage, so, you know, this is very sad for him. Um, then, Lacey goes to confront her father and talk they talk about you know how it was growing up and how he was at sea and how being with her mother kind of you know drove her to drinking and partying and i guess i can't remember where this was coming from because i think he said i try to tell you stuff and she like well i don't be listening to you because you wasn't there basically she felt like she never had either one of her parents and so, Father John goes over to Felon John to tell Felon John to stop messing with his daughter. And Felon John is like, okay, well, I just, he was like, hit me, hit me, hit me. Okay. Now, if he would have hit you, now what? Anyway, he goes over to uh, Felon John. Felon John is like, bro, I'm not about to hit you. You trying to, you know, you trying to... Oh, wow, my my order is on its way. Oh, yay. You're trying to, uh, what is it called? Gold, gold, gold. You know what I'm trying to say. You're trying to bait me into hitting, but I'm not about to hit just like your daughter. I just got to know one thing. And Father John is like, what? 
Did Lacey call the cops on me? Of course Lacey called the cops on you. Now, I don't know. I, I don't know. Did Lacey call the cops on him? Who knows? But obviously her father would say that Lacey called the cops on you so you could get out of his life. Now, I'm trying to figure out, did John say that this is going to be the end of their story since he's found out the truth? But I can't really remember. Episode 29, 30, and 31, Brittany and Marcelino and Cindy were in all three of those episodes. This is a really heavy story, okay? So I'm not going to talk about that right now. I do have to say, please, like, I, um, I do have to say that y'all, well, not y'all, but I, I went on Reddit and, you know, they was talking about, uh, puppy lost weight. But it's like... You do have to, like, understand that those those couldn't have been, like, within the same, like, editing time frame. Not editing. Filming time frame. We, we can't sit up here and act like Puppy dropped all this weight from last episode to the other episode. Also, it wasn't weird to you that Amber was talking to her mother in the car and then when they all three met up she's like hey how are you like she hadn't seen her in a minute like come on like let's let's use our deductive reasoning everyone anyway so puppy and amber go to a lawyer to find out what they can do to vince um they the lawyer tells them that vince may have forged her signature since the paperwork went through but now that she is his adopted child it means that she is the sole beneficent benefic what is it beneficiary and that means that if something happens to him she's going to get it if he is not married and doesn't have any other children um she called puppy calls Vince and is like yo did you find out anything about the adoption Vince says you trying to uh blackmail me or you trying to skedaddle me gold me shist you trying to shist me and um they like what so Amber meets up with her mother. She talks about her boyfriend who her mother don't like because he's not a cool man. Uh, they talk. That's all they talk about. Um, puppy has gotten herself a job. She is talking to someone who she used to be in prison with. So she talks about how it seems as though Amber has changed. Which, like, come on. Think about it. Think, hello. Like, I'm not talking to y'all. I'm talking to Reddit. Because it's like, oh, puppy back on drugs okay but like the way that she was talking like it seemed like amber don't even be talking to me all like that and amber don't even be like bot like messing with me clearly there has to be some time pass because wasn't they just buddy buddy like come on anyway so uh then they all three go out to dinner and puppy wants to go to las vegas to see vince Amber wants no part of it. Amber has yet to tell Puppy about Sammy. Amber's mother thinks that they should go, not her, just Amber and Puppy, should go to Las Vegas. But Amber is really trying to turn her life around. So she's not really wanting to go. Will she go? Who knows? Okay, so this whole um, Destiny and Sean thing. She tells Sean he was just a trick, you know, uh, karma, whatever you did to me will come back onto you. And it's like, you believe in karma out of everybody in the world. You believe in karma? The one who, like, skipped out on bail and never, and took off her ankle monitor and did all of that. You believe in karma? Because the karma would be the upcoming prison sentence that you're going to get. Wouldn't that be karma if you believe in karma? And you're saying that this man is going to get karma for how she treated, how he treated you. So she's like, go dude, leave dude. So he's like, okay, I'm going to leave. She gets in the car. She drives away. She goes back to her sister's house. He then calls the tow truck, 
tow truck gets there an hour later and i'm like man an hour is such a long time what if she literally went in there to be like uh-huh yeah girl okay well i'm gonna go and then leave and you just call the tow truck anyway the tow truck driver gets there destiny comes out destiny is furious now i thought I originally thought that this was a car that she wasn't given, but I guess it was a car that he gave her to drive. And though, you know, oh, man, that's sad. But also, the car is in his name. So, you know, we can't just be like, well, this was a gift. Because if the car is a gift, then shouldn't it have been in her name, you know? To be a gift so she wouldn't have to deal with this but anyway she's like well just give me the money for it or something give you the money for what a car this is like a a, a 2000 something nissan ultimate you want me to give you the money for it ma'am are you on dope no i'm not gonna give you the money for it she was like, oh, I need to get my stuff out the trunk. I need to get my stuff out the trunk. And she, he's like, go get the keys. And she's like, no, you go get the keys. You figure it out. He opened the door, popped the trunk. And she trying to close the trunk back because she mad. She get her stuff. She's like, you're a bitch. You're a bitch. You're a bitch. Yeah, just go, little dick man. Go. And it's like, ma'am, you lost, okay? She said that she don't have the last laugh. Uh, is she gonna skip out on bail? I don't really know what she's gonna do to get the last laugh. But I was very confused as to why her sister was sitting up there talking about, You're wrong, Sean. You're wrong. Uh, ma'am, let your sister drive your car. What? <laughs> what? Like, come on. Anyway, Sarah... What do you want me to say? Sarah and Michael. Sarah... What do you think happened? What do you think she fell? Back on the penis. It's so... I I, I don't... I'm not going to talk about it. Because it's like... This is a very... This is a very... Um, a big lesson in everyone who is like... Oh, he's going to leave his wife. Oh, just because that's his baby mama. They don't have feelings for one another. You might be dealing with a Michael. Don't deal with a Michael, baby. Do not deal with a Michael because he is piping down his baby mama as we speak, okay? Brittany, Cindy, Marcelino, they go to Alaska. They are now in Alaska in a whole pan pizza, okay? They are in Alaska in a whole pandemonium okay in a whole printer they are in in alaska they go to see um honestly though uh all i know is if cindy was my uh, not cindy if jackie was my mama you better not have no I anyway she talking about oh i love y'all love me uh, crying and everything then she was like then i'm listening to cindy talking i said cindy cindy y'all you and britney are the same person this is sad this is a study goal anyway anyway so jackie talking about I ain't pushed the pipe in your mouth. I, you should have told me somebody was touching you and I would have stopped it. Girl. Cindy said, girl. She got up. She done walked away talking about, girl, I can't deal with all of this. I'm really trying to, when I tell you Brittany needs, Brittany, Brittany is saying, girl, my name, call me y y Yolanda. Is that her name? Yolanda. Yolanda. Call is Yolanda call me Iyanla okay because I'm fixing your life okay she is just really she's like hey you want to see my father uh, okay the father is in a relationship it's just really sad because you like he's like man you gotta keep you gotta look up what you say you gotta watch out what you say. 
then she didn't took her mama to the to the site of her accident when you know she was burned over 80 percent of her body and her mama's like i just wanted to end it all and it's like Brittany, you really you better hope your mama come out on the other side of this in a great position because this is a lot to handle okay it is a lot to handle you can't be forcing people to want to you know face their demons bro you can't just have people go through the first stage and not feel it, it takes a long time to go through the first stage it takes a an extreme amount of time to go through the first stage and you really um you're really sitting up here feeling, thinking that the stage of Negredo is just going to happen immediately. And it's not. You got to face all your demons. And honestly, I really feel like just because Brittany didn't face all her demons, she's like, okay, mom, come on. Come on, face your demons. And her mama like, now? I mean, I, okay, I guess. Anyway, moving on. Cause it was really sad okay um who do i have to talk about chevelle oh lindsay lindsay back in jail i i i i'm not surprised that she is back in jail but i also it was like i don't know i ain't gonna say it i just it's it's not surprising but also the don't take away from the fact that scott makes me disgusted so Quaylen and chevelle uh he didn't went on the ferris wheel with her talking about you won't go meet me you won't go meet me you won't go meet me uh, you won't go meet me will you meet me i'm like this is not romantic at all i'm not feeling romanced okay she said yes yeah. she started crying d mark like me then they get into uh shoving match it was giving very much prison yard <sighs> very much so uh chevelle coming in like she like she the warden she was coming in like she the warden like, caught all these cameras now my Ela is in there and i'm like my Ela is in the room like i mean obviously no this shouldn't happen but my Ela in the room like my Ela really never to see nothing anyway i heard i gotta hurry up so they're together. They fake uh, makeup for Myla, and now everything is hunky dory. Last and least, John Christiana. Christiana is getting out in two days, or you know she's out. Um, she told John that she is not allowed to be around anyone with an open charge with it, which is her sister. John obviously is very happy about this because this means that he doesn't have to be around Tara. Tara, bull. He doesn't have to be around Tara and he doesn't have to, um, you know, fake the funk because Christiana would definitely know that they were flirting now uh the producer asked him has he ever been faithful in his relationships and he said i've never been with them big ass papa i've never been faithful to anybody wait but can i say something why when he kicked out uh tara and she was leaving the next day and she was like i mean he got all these cars a pool you know he was in he was in prison for 16 years where this money come from I, I don't know and i'm like girl i know you was just trying to fall on that man's dick and now you sitting up here talking about he's a felon girl and you're a drug addict you see you see see what happens when we say things that are true see you anyway his mom, uh, her mama talking about, oh, John. And it's like, ma'am, y'all, why ain't Tara been living there for nine months? She couldn't get a, a job. She couldn't get, like, anything. Um, they mama ain't getting no social security sitting that on over to Tara so she could have a place to stay. Like, come on. Like, come on now. Come on. 
now. Tara says that she'll be back. So I don't know what that means. Does that mean that her sister is going to go back to prison? Or does that mean that John is going to be like, Tara, I can't live without you, baby. I love you. I want to be with you. Anyway, uh, Christiana get out. Christiana is like, did my sister flirt with you? And he says, no. Okay. Wait, did you see the preview? She said, damn it, Tara, slapped. <laughs> Why she, please, I think, oh, Lord, Jesus. She said, slapping somebody in the face with an open hand when you're upset is hilarious. <laughs> Bitch, she slapped her. Um, what was I about to say? Oh, and then they gave me Caitlyn and Matt. Matt and Caitlyn vibes when they was in that woods about to get it on. I said, oh, smells like trash in here. I remember that. I haven't smelled that since, well, no, I, I, it, it be smelling like that every time I walk. Anyway, I'm done. Okay, I have things to do, so if y'all like this review, you can like, comment, and subscribe. You can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, or visit my website. My name is Brielle. I make beats. I sing songs if you like what you see. Come on along. Bye.